Hi, everyone. OK, so we're going to start today's session. Um, so this webinar today is called Meet Your SU. Uh, it's going to be me. I'm from the SU myself. Um, my name is Belito, and I am the Student Community Development Coordinator at MDXSU, which basically means that I coordinate and facilitate activity for seven different types of students. Um, so that includes postgraduates, international students, um, students who have caring responsibilities, um, and mature students, among others. So that's kind of my job. Um, and I basically just need to talk to you a bit about what your SU can do, um, what kind of opportunities we have on um, for when you come here in uh, September, I think. Um, and we're going to kind of run through that. Um, I'm also joined by Whitney, uh, who is a current student in Middlesex, and she's from Zimbabwe, um, and she's going to talk a little bit about her experiences. Um, this webinar is going to last around an hour, like 60 minutes or so. Um, so we've got a quick presentation from me um, and then from Whitney, um, and then we've got a little time for some questions at the end. Um, and if you'd like to ask a question, you can type them into the chat, which is the right hand side of your screen. Um, and we'll answer them uh, later. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, I think everyone kind of heard that as you come in. Um, so feel free to keep your camera on or turn your camera off, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Um, and because it's being recorded, we're going to send around the recording um, in the next day or two with all the presentation slides. So you can just keep on top of all the information um, that we're, we've gone going through. Um, so if everyone's ready, I'll start and tell you a bit about um, MDXSU. Um, so here's a little sort of description um, of what the SU kind of is. So um, it exists to, to support, our SU exists to support all students, um, including international students. Um, we have like a lot of resources and support staff who support international students um, through their kind of time at Middlesex. Um, we've got an advice service, which I'll talk to you a bit about later. Um, and we also make sure there's information for you on like, you know, how to support yourself emotionally, what's your, your finances, like, you know, what to do when you first move here, um, banking, that kind of thing. Um, we send out lots of resources and stuff when you first join um, in September. Um, and we have a lot of things kind of going on that you can get involved in. So, uh, as I said before, Middlesex Student Union exists to support and represent all Middlesex University students. So when you join Middlesex, you're automatically a member uh, of the SU. You don't have to do anything, you just are because you're a student here. Um, we're independent to the university, so that means we can offer you slightly different support services than the university can do. Um, so it means that we're able to offer you um, a free confidential advice service that can give you advice on stuff like um, any academic like problems you have with your kind of studies, um, any emotional problems and things like that, that you need to talk through. Um, we make sure you have like a lot of support in that. So being a charity, being separate university, it's kind of advantageous because we can provide you with a slightly different kind of take a slightly different time term for support. But we also um, have lots of stuff that you guys can get involved with in terms of employability, which I'll go on to talk a bit, a bit later. Um, societies and groups, events and stuff like that. And just we all kind of offer you um, experiences that make sure that your time at Middlesex is as rich um, as possible. Um, we, we're very proud to say that we, we won awards for our campaigns um, in the past few years, and we're also Students' Union of the Year in 2017. Um, and we were kind of really proud of those achievements, and we really make sure that we, you know, keep up to that reputation and make sure we're as inclusive and supportive of our students as possible. Um, so what is a Students' Union? Well, basically, it's a kind of support service that's set up at Middlesex to make sure that students have the best time um, that they can do throughout university and it doesn't just mean like fun events and stuff but it also means like pastoral care and support um, like uh, any kind of advocacy so making sure that you guys have lots of feedback channels that you can use to talk to your lecturers to talk to other staff um, making your, sure you're supported with us when you're having conversations with the university um, because we're a union as well we run lots of campaigns that are meant to like enrich and support the lives of students at Middlesex um, and um, because we're a student union, we're representative of you. So we elect uh, four, five roles each year. Um, so that's a president of the SU, who's um, a full-time paid member of staff and four vice presidents, one for every faculty. And they represent like all the faculties that we have um, in loads of different kinds of ways and make sure that they take all the kind of feedback and experiences of the students they support into like any discussions they have um, with the university. Um, so, and we also have, um, 
about 25 members of um, full-time staff, so including me, um, I'm a full-time member of staff, and my job is to support um, all the kind of campaigns and stuff that the our officers do, and also support the, like the students that I said I looked after um, in a different kind of way. So we're led by these student officers. They're the people who decide kind of like, you know, what our visions are gonna be, what our campaigns are gonna be. And because they're Middlesex students, or they were, sometimes they, you know, to, to become, a uh, president or a vice president, you either take a year out or you do it after your degree because they are Middlesex students. They're very well aware of the experiences of Middlesex, like people at Middlesex. So it's as representative as possible and they're elected democratically every year by you and the student body. Um, so this kind of year, uh, we've been looking at kind of four campaigns. Um, so we've looked at mental health and well-being. Um, which obviously has been, I think, even more important over the year this pandemic um, than it than it ever has been. So making sure that we have lots of kind of like hangout spaces for international students, uh, making sure that students kind of get or know about resources that they can use um, to make to make sure that they're kind of you know feeling well. Um, working with our university counselling and mental health team to make sure that services are as like representative of student experience as possible and generally making sure that like mental health is kept a top priority by um, the university. We've also looked at diversity as well which is quite like a big subject area but it basically means that we've taken into account um, how you know there are lots of underrepresented um, groups um, in society and so at Middlesex too because of how diverse our student population is that requires specific support and specific kind of um, awareness so for diversity, we launched um, this Black Student Experience Survey. So we set up lots of focus groups of Black students at Middlesex um, and writing into a big report that we can present to the university to make sure that they um, can keep up as supportive as Black students as possible and are as aware as they can be of this, the issues that Black students can face as possible. So making sure we keep the university in check um, and also us as an SU in check so we can provide specific support to Black students. We also have international student support as well, because um, obviously, as you guys will know, as international students, there are specific things that you know, you'll know you need or that you um, will want during your time in Middlesex um, that is important for the university to focus on. And obviously, you know, us as an SU, that we've got a lot to learn about how international students um, live at Middlesex as is the university. So it's about continuing this kind of partnership with us and the university to make sure that international students are as supported as possible. So we've been looking at how students are supported in halls, how they're supported when they're studying in their home countries, what the process is for them when they're traveling back to the UK, how they're doing during quarantine, if they need any kind of food parcels when they first quarantine over here before they study, things like that. And we've also been looking at academic and employment support. So making sure that students are can uh, kind of provide good feedback to their lecturers, feel supported by their lecturers, and also um, gain enough skills and um, have enough kind of opportunities for them to feel supported in getting a job while they're at Middlesex or after Middlesex. And uh, this little picture here is from our LGBT staff network and LGBT um, student liberation group um, going to Pride a couple of years ago. It's a really, really lovely image. We're very proud of our like really, really strong LGBT um, focused uh, staff group and student group. So this is just a few examples of stuff we've been up to. Um, so the past few years, we've resettled Syrian refugees in the local community, which is Hendon, and in the borough in London, which is Barnet. Um, and we've worked with the university to provide fee waivers so these students can study here for free. Um, obviously our winter graduation is, uh, hasn't really happened this year because of the pandemic, but we've made it so that students can graduate in winter and in summer, so that, especially for international students, if um, it's hard for you to stay over the summer or if winter's a better time for you to graduate, you can still graduate along with your peers. Um, we provided free sanitary products, so free kind of period products like tampons and pads in all of our bathrooms, regardless of gender. So making sure there's enough period, su period supplies in women's bathrooms, in men's bathrooms and in gender neutral spaces too. We set up a free bike rental scheme on campus to ensure that students can get around easily. Um, so, you know, making sure that we're supporting the environment by providing like C like carbon, carbon free, carbon neutral, like ways of getting around the campus, but also supporting our physical and mental well-being. 
we always encourage our students to vote in local elections because obviously as a student union we're well aware of how important it is when young people get involved in politics so we make sure that we um have a lot of like support for students who want to become more involved in what's going on around them um and we provide and we always have done um, free support and activities for students during their assessment periods so we run this campaign called make it happen um every uh, every year over exam term where we have on like lots of welfare events it's all been online this year but we have lots of welfare events lots of resources that go out um, and different things to help students while they're going through their exams and i'm sure it'll happen next year for you hopefully in person but we'll see and we've we've managed to do um we've obviously I mean, this is my first time back in the office after a year and two months, three months, um, but we've had to, we've made sure that all our services are online and they're all like um, as functional as possible. So, um, and I think that we're going to keep most of our services, a lot of our services online so that international students can use them as well, because um, we figured out that actually, although a lot of international students do come to the UK to study, some of them do study from a distance and are studying at the moment because of the pandemic in their home countries. So making sure they can use all our services a priority for us. So you can't really see this here because my screen won't expand, but this is MDXSU opportunities. So as I said, we also make sure you provide lots of like employment opportunities. Um, so every year we hire about uh, six or seven interns for all of the different teams that we have at the SU, which are um, paid positions, um, seven hours a week, um, London living wage, which is 10.75 an hour. So we make sure that students um, are supported in getting like a, a safe, like regular job through the SU. As we're aware that, you know, especially international students when they move here, sometimes can be taken advantage of by local employers. So making sure that we have like regular paid opportunities for students where you know where your hours are and you know when you're coming in is really important to us too. Um, <clears throat> we also run community placements. Um, so they go on every kind of term and um, the and welcome, which is going on in September when you guys arrive, that's when we advertise them. So there'll normally be about 10 different positions working in different kind of charities and local organisations across um, the borough. And I think they're all going to be, the, you can all work them online or in person this year. So that is also like a six week long placement programme, which is also paid seven hours a week, London living wage. So making sure that students can get loads of different kind of experiences in the charity sector um, in terms of we've had placements that are like ones in graphic design, um, ones in animation, ones in like charity and fundraising roles, things like that. Um, a really good thing to get involved in when they do come up in welcome in September. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Um, we also have our own student media channels. So up here you can see radio, newspaper and television. So we um, have a newspaper called The Echo, uh, where we have regular writers for and anyone can kind of contribute. Um, you just have to go onto the student media website, which is on our um, SU website, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, and you can choose to write about anything you really want. Uh, and it's a really, really nice space. Um, we always run always running sessions on skill building. So, you know, if you haven't done any radio before and you really want to learn how to maybe do your own podcast or put your own show on a radio station, we make sure that you're fully supported and have been trained properly um, and also have like opportunities to network with any kind of like radio organizations that are going on the local area. And we also have a television channel as well. So student media TV. Um, so if you want to get an experience in filming, um, anything like that, there's a good place to start. You don't need to have any experience it's really, really, we really want to make it so that these channels are as easy to use as possible. And we always really encourage students who might not ever have got involved in media before to do so, um, because here's a really good space where you can do it for free, um, obviously, and also kind of like build up like good relationships with other kind of people in this space, which is, you know, make it's important to have good social spaces and also have the opportunity to network um, outside the organisation. And you can see some little pictures here. We were called PAL Media, but we've changed it. Um, but we have our own um, little kind of, I don't know why I'm pointing here, I'm in the office, but you can't see. We've got our own radio station, um, which is like behind our offices um, and loads of different equipment, like TV sound, like um, cameras, um, anything like that to kind of film or record anything that you want to contribute to Middlesex. So we really make it so that you have all the resources you need. Um, and there's always good opportunities going on with that as well. Um, so I'll talk to you a little about our student group. So I said I was a student community development coordinator, which is a long title, but the groups are kind of support, you can see them up here. So commuter students, international students, you guys, mature students, parents and carers, and a couple of other ones. 
but we also have um, loads of other different groups at Middlesex that like provide like social spaces for different types of students. So we have our four liberation groups, which I don't know if you can see the last one here, but we have MDXSU Black students, which um, is for um, students of color, um, MDXSU LGBT students for LGBT students, women students and disabled students too. So if you define into any of these groups, um, that's a social space for you where you can meet other people who share your experiences, where you can take part in research, take part in campaigns, um, and have like, you know, just like a fun events where you can meet other people. Um, and we also have uh, about like, I would say, 60 to 70 different societies. Um, and they're different from liberation groups, which are more political, and our communities, which are more about like, you know, meeting and socializing. The societies are like special, you can have ones that are special interests. So we have gaming societies, um, we have faith-based ones. So we have about three um, Christian societies, um, two Islamic societies, a Jewish society, Hindu society as well. We have um, national societies. So there's like an Indian society, for example. Uh, we have the African Caribbean society, um, which also works a lot with our black students um, group for obvious reasons. Um, and we also have academic um, societies. So that's like our law society, our journalism society, um, our sociology society. So loads of different things that you can get involved with depending on your interests. And you can join in as much um, as you want with any of them. There's not really any pressure. Um, they're very easy to sign up with. And during welcome, um, when you guys get here, we'll have a freshers fair where all the societies will be there, whether that's virtual or in person. Um, still to, so obviously we, we still have to see but there'll be a space where you can kind of meet people from each different society, hear a bit about what they do and see if you want to kind of get involved. Um, and you can also start your own um, society. We really push you to do that because obviously, you know, there are things that you're interested in that we might not offer yet. And we want to make it so that our students feel supported so that they can actually join their own society and meet, meet other students who share their interests. And like, you know, you can join, you can have whatever society that you'd want within like reason obviously but anything that you really really want to kind of promote a middle sex or talk about and if you know that other people have similar interests to you get involved for example we have a new rock and roll society um and they like talk about music together they used to go to gigs and like concerts before the pandemic and they're quite a popular society now so it really is anything you want it to be and i was kind of talking about this earlier but our advice and support service that's like where you can kind of go to talk about any academic problems that you have. Um, so if you have any problems with completing your assignments, like anything else going on in your life that you want to talk to your lecturers about, but don't know how, you can talk to us about it so we can support you. Um, anything that's also going on in your life that can impact your studies, um, we can provide you with like advice and support too. Um, and our advisors uh, are trained as like two to three of them. Um, and they work Monday to Friday, nine to five, and you can phone or get an appointment. And obviously you used to be able to come in on campus and have a physical appointment, but all of our appointments are now online um, over like Zoom. So you can kind of see a friendly face and talk to someone and also email in and phone as well. So loads of avenues of communication. But yeah, I don't really want to go on too much about what we're doing because I'm aware that um, we've got to get on to Whitney and I don't want to give you an information overload. But there's lots of different services that we can provide. Um, you can have a little look at us um, and what we're up to at mdxsu.com here. And we're also on Facebook, uh, if you use Facebook, on Twitter uh, and on Instagram too. Um, so please give, give us an ad, see what we're up to. So when you come here in um, um, September, you'll be able to kind of um, see a bit about like what's going on even before it's already on so you can keep in the know and in the loop um, about our future plans and projects. Whew. So yeah that's a lot of um, stuff and obviously we'll have time at the end if you've got any questions for me um, which I'll be happy to uh, answer and if I can't answer them myself or if I need a bit more time uh, I'm sure that um, I can get your emails and contact you that way but I'm going to pass on um, to Whitney who's going to talk about her experience. Hello everyone, I'm Whitney Mears and I'm an international student from Harare, Zimbabwe. I currently study psychology with criminology and I'm, well, I just completed my first year of studies. Um, I'm going into second year in September. Um, I've been 
um, at Middlesex for two years now. I did a foundation year. How do I change the slide? Oh. Um, when it comes to societies, I am a member of the African Caribbean Society, um, which is specifically from for students from Africa and Caribbean areas. And um, for me, um, I joined it during the Freshers' Week, which is a time where I was very, very confused and I really couldn't even, I was so nervous to find a way to meet new people. So for me, as soon as I walked in, I had one of the um, leaders of the African Caribbean Society see me and as, as he heard my accent, he came and he, and it, he was so excited and it was such an exciting experience for me because I felt welcome immediately. And I literally had no choice but to tell myself, okay, I'm going, when's the next meeting? And it was such a good experience. I met so many new people and um, I met a lot of friends that I have had for my entire um, experience at Middlesex. They are different um, societies for and people from anywhere. There's also the Christian society that I'm a part of. And in the African Caribbean society, there is the Girls Talk which is for the girls only, where we speak about experiences unique to us as girls. And that's helped us as well, especially during the pandemic and coping with um, self-care and um, watching movies together and everything, especially during lockdown when um, we were stuck as international students there for quite a bit and we weren't going to university and we were all just, just stuck in halls and we couldn't socialize. We found ways to do it online. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, it is a an excellent idea, especially as an international student, because you will meet new people, hundred percent. You'll meet the friends that you will make for life. You can find people that um, you can find events that you can do. It gives you a social life, even if you're not into um, the nightlife or the um, or you work a lot, you can find people that work in the same areas as you, you can do daytime events, there's picnics, there's um, games nights, there's movie nights, there's a lot of things you can do, even if you don't live in halls. So yeah, I think that's, that's, just, that's it for me. Thanks so much, Whitney. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and if you guys have any kind of questions or anything like that, feel free to unmute yourself um, or pop it into the chat. I'm just going to have a look at the chat and see if there's anything that I can answer. I've just seen a question from someone asking how they can join the student union. Um, automatically, when you when you come here in September, you're a member of the SU um, and you can sign up to different groups. Um, on our website and you can even kind of sign up for them now and see what they're up to. Um, I'll just share the link in the chat so that you can see how you can sign up. Uh, in fact, I think I might take you through the website um, so you can have a little look at how it all works. One sec, I'm just going to see if I can share my screen. Maybe that would be a good thing to, for you guys to see. <clears throat> so this is our website. Um, We've got lots of kind of different things going on. We we have a little bit here about what we're up to, which basically kind of recaps what I've took you guys through. Um, have a little welcome video. So what happens in our freshers week? Um, and I'll show you a bit about like how you can get involved with different stuff. 
Oh, another thing that I forgot to talk to you about was um, representation, like other forms of representation that you can take. So there's something that we like support students in doing, which is becoming a student voice leader. So when you when you start in September, um, there'll be there'll an opportunity for you to run um, as a student voice leader. So a student voice leader basically is someone who contributes to like ongoing discussions with the lecturers that you have for your specific course and the heads of department um, that you have. So who's teaching you? Um, and you kind of collect feedback from all of your everyone in your class and then you present it to um, your teachers and go through it together so that you know if there's any problems that you are finding as students or anything that you want to kind of like talk to the uni about or any praise that you have for particular lecturers you can bring it up then so often you know we found that like this really works um, for students who have like specific academic problems that they want to kind of talk about you know um, with their lecturers about um, and so it's a really good space for you to kind of talk about like how to make your course better so that's something you can get involved with. Um, we have lots of different events going on. So obviously we've got nothing up for our welcome month yet, um, but there will be um, specific things that are going on. And we have kind of like a little event um, calendar. So obviously there's not much here for now because we're not doing many events. There's not many people are, are studying, um, but you can kind of click on every day and see if there's an event um, for you in particular. Um, so we have, we run awards every year as well for any kind of, for like our lecturers, for our teachers and for our students too. Um, and we also run lots of things over Christmas. So we have a, a like a Christmas fair on campus called MD Xmas. And we encourage like students who have like creative kind of businesses on the side to come and like advertise their products. Um, and we also run a development week um, for our students as well. So that's like a whole week of skill building, team building, conference, stuff like that. Uh, and I'll show you briefly what our societies look like. So obviously I talked a lot about like how many societies we have, but I'll, I'll show you in full how many societies we do have. Um, and they're split up into all these different categories. And, you know, feel free even now to just like pop through, have a little look at the ones you can join. So say you wanted to get involved in anything to do with music, you could go on the music tab and you can see there's a K-pop and culture society, Bollywood, musical theatre, Modest fashion as well. That's a really like big um, society that we have. There's our pol political ones as well. So debating, law, um, amnesty as well, which is linked to Amnesty International. And here are our religious ones. So Christian Union, First Love, Carries on Campus, lots of different like religious ones. Uh, we don't have many sport ones. Sports uh, societies are run by the SU, not run by the SU, run by the university, but we do have chess society and game society as well. Uh, and our liberation groups are also here, so the ones I was talking about, so women's, black, LGBT and disabled students. Um, and if you want to find out about much about anything, you can just have a little click and see what they're up to. And they normally have like a Facebook page you can see here an Instagram. You can email them to ask a bit more about what they do. Um, and they have all this kind of stuff as well. And you can also join the group online and they'll send you regular kind of emails with information. Um, and I was talking about this is the student media website, which you can have a little look at as well. So if we go on to newspaper, you can see a little bit uh, all the kind of articles that we have put out. So we have some videos here about people's different experiences, but we also have um, stuff on design, fashion. Uh, we had a lot of articles over Black History Month by different students, which is really, really fun and interesting. Um, we have our own radio station. So we had lots of different radio shows over this year. Um, and obviously it kind of has information about, about all of our heads of radio, all of our students who are involved, because it's all run by our students, but supported by our staff. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different opportunities that you can get involved with. And it really does not matter like what kind of skill or experience you have before, we try and make it as open as possible. Um, and just to remind you as well about our advice service, which you can contact when you start, you can watch a little video here on how we work. Um, and there's lots of different sections of stuff that we can support you on. So academic misconduct, any appeals that you might have, any complaints that you want to make, um, if you want any advice on disciplinary procedures, um, anything like that, and you can book an appointment here and complete all the consent forms. 
Um, and the last thing I want to show you is um, we also have like information on well different well-being services so mdx at home is our page that's like specifically for students um during the pandemic you're working re remotely so we have a center here that's all the government uk government updates so you can keep in the loop about what the government's saying um what the university is saying in regards to support um and the kind of list of stuff that us and the university have built together um we have a little COVID community page um, on Facebook that people you can keep in the loop of. Um, just like lots of regular posting, people talking about their experiences, kind of sharing what's going on with them, asking particular questions, things like that. Um, so lots and lots of different bits um, going on. Um, um, so please have a little look as well on the website and just take yourself through. And obviously, um, you know, we aren't running many events at the moment, but if you would like to kind of join a society or ask any questions as a society, like that's absolutely fine. You know, have a little look um, on our pages and see if you can send them an email if you've got any particular questions you want to ask. We always really encourage our students to like have a good open dialogue with other students. So I hope that give it, gives a bit more information about what we're up to. Um, I've just seen some questions while I'm just coming to the chat about um, offers and conditional offers. I think um, for that, it's that's not really something I can support you with um, from an SU standpoint. Um, but you can talk to our advice service um, if you want any information on your offers. Um, or also, oh, okay, hang on, no worries. Maybe, maybe something. Um, I think Fanny might have gotten back to people who've been asking about their um, offers. Okay, cool. But anybody got any other questions for me or for Whitney? Alrighty, well, if you've got any kind of further questions, um, please uh, feel free to email me. I'm going to put my email into the chat as well, so you can contact me. Um, but also have a look on our website if you want to contact other people. Um, and then I'm sure um, Whitney and Fanny are there to talk to you as well. And I think um, we've got this little survey filling up here. So if you want to uh, pop in some feedback, um, that would be great. So this poll kind of helps us, it's all anonymous, but it helps us um, see how we can um, improve like these presentations like this. Oh, I'm glad that a lot of you are thinking about joining society. That's really cool. They're really, really good ways to meet other people and kind of just like do stuff that you're really interested in. Also, you know, especially international students, like finding other students who are maybe from the same place as you or share some like religious experiences to you or life experiences. That also really, really helps, especially if you're going to study in the UK, if you haven't studied here before. Um, and you're moving as well, always really helps to find people who have, are similar to you. I'll just give a couple of minutes um, so you guys can fill out um, the poll. And then I think we might finish a bit early if there's no uh, further questions.
I can't really see the poll anymore, so I'm assuming the poll time might have ended. Well, thank you so much, guys, for coming to the webinar. Um, it's been lovely to, to virtually meet um, some of you. And I hope your kind of questions got answered. And if they don't, um, you can go on our Facebook group, as it says in the chat, um, where some of our ambassadors can answer. Um, and I think Fanny will put you in touch with specific people. Um, so thank you for filling in the poll as well. Um, and we are really excited and excited to kind of welcome you to Middlesex very soon. But take care over the summer. Um, feel free to pop into our Facebook group, see what's going on, um, ask our students any questions that you have. Um, thank you so much, Whitney, for um, presenting with me. Um, and this uh, webinar, the recording and um, the slides will be in your inboxes um, soon. So you can hear a little bit about what we've else been up to. But anyway, take care and hope to see you soon. Feel free to, to leave and get on with your day.